So this compressor blew up. Actually, the motor blew up. So I'm just draining out the oil here through the drain. Doesn't look too bad. But we gotta replace the motor and then we'll see if anybody can actually rebuild this motor um, just to have a spare. But we'll go through the process of how to change this motor, what caused it, um, and, and other maintenance items like the air filter and basic stuff like that in your Ingersoll and compressor. All right, so this is the third, this is gonna be the third motor I've replaced on this thing. Um, I don't know if the cold weather, it causes this or enhances the, um, the potential for damage to the windings, but the first motor lasted a couple years. The second motor, I think it's going on about eight years, so it's not too bad. And then this one, this new one, obviously I'm gonna document, you know, when I put it in and hour, I'm gonna put hour meter on there, but, I'm going to refill it with AMSOIL, synthetic compressor oil. Um, this is SAE 30. They do have an SAE 20 for even colder climates. Um, I don't know. It's probably 25, 30 degrees in this room. So there's a couple things I guess I could do. I could either run 20 in the winter, 30 in the summer, or come up with some kind of um, uh, heating element for the crankcase here. But there's a quart, there's about one quart, a little less than a quart in there. And this is what I'm going to put in. And then I'll put part numbers for the motors and everything. Um, because the OEM, or not OEM, but if you look up the IR part number, um, the motor's like 650, I think. But this one is only 480. You do have to re-drill a hole on the compressor. But you're saving 150, almost 200 bucks on a, a different Accenture motor. So we'll get into all that, how to change it, and the details. Um, looks like you just pull the pulley off. I, like I said, I've done it twice before. Um, but I'm going to pull the cap off this and kind of look at the viscosity because this has been sitting out here, and uh, we can go from there. All right. So this is apparently really good oil for... Yeah, this is not bad at all. There's no way this is um, thick enough to damage the the motor here i mean that looks perfectly fine i think over time i mean these things are cheap they're made wherever mexico or wherever they're made and i just think um you know hot and cold obviously cold is worse because there's more draw on the compressor which could contribute to these blowing out you know who knows if it would last any longer in room temperature um but like i said i've had this like this for at least I don't know, 13, 14 years. Um, the, the water drain on the bottom is frozen, so that's kind of just happens. Um, that's not. So we'll just get into taking this apart and figure it all out as we go. All right, so you have to remove at least this back screen, um, potentially this front one if you can't get the pulley off. You have to take the pulley off of this one and put it on the new motor. <clears throat> um, the screen just has like a plastic tab that you just twist and then it opens. These bolts are 10 millimeter, uh, I believe. Yes, so the bolts on the screen are 10 millimeter. The ones that hold the motor, on, for mine, are at least 14 millimeter. And then you'll have to take disconnect your power and then you'll have just single phase motor so it's just going to be uh, power neutral and then ground and then same coming out of here to the box so let's see here I've already pre-done this obviously and then once this is done your motor is free and it comes right out so that's the wiring aspect. Now we need the four bolts. <clears throat> and then I can't forget to fill this up with oil before we put the new one in, powered on and everything. But really easy. And like I said, I'll show you where you have to re-drill this if you want to save 150 bucks on the motor. Uh, but we'll get to that in a second. Alright, so our motor's free. We've got the belt off. Um, here you can see the hole that I had to drill right here to fit this different frame 
Uh, but now, as you can see, the motor's stuck because this vet grate is in the way. So what we're gonna have to do is basically remove this 10 millimeter bolts across the bottom, at least a little bit to lift it up so you can get the motor out of here. Um, I don't know how tight this pulley is on. We're probably just gonna have to use either a puller or a hammer or something um, to get this off of here. Because there's no way to really get it off when it's in this state. So one final look at everything. It's just a five horsepower motor, standard 3450 RPM, I think it is. Give you a look at that. I don't know if I did that before. Um, and then something else to do while you're here. These air filters are supposed to be changed every year, they say. Um, but, you know, I don't know. I guess just inspect it, see how it is based on your where it's located and everything. This one's pretty dirty. I mean, it's never been changed, so. Uh, it's probably a good idea to change it. So we got new ones, these coming. And what else, what else? I think that's about it for now. I'm just gonna get that grade off. And yeah, I think that's all there is to talk about for the moment. All right, I knew I forgot something. So this is an hour meter. You can get these on Amazon, eBay, whatever. I like this brand. It seems to last. I have it on a lot of different uh, equipment. Basically, it shows you total and then uh, the current um, run time. And you can stick this, you know, somewhere on the motor. It comes with double-sided tape. And this is just going to keep track of the hours on the compressor. So. When you're doing your maintenance, your oil changes, your air filter changes, when you want to know when the motor dies, how many hours are on it, etc. It's good to have this on and how this works. It's sealed unit, um, but once it detects vibration, it'll start, it'll turn on and start tracking. So very simple. Um, yeah. Alright, we got that back grade off. Here it is. Here's our uh, parts stash, those are those two little tabs, and then various bolts and nuts, no big deal. And then if you're so inclined to change the belt, it looks like this one has an A58, Bando Power King. But you know, I don't know at what point this has to be changed, if it's like an automotive belt and it starts cracking, change it, but this one still looks fine after 15 years or whatever. So. All right, our motor's out. I'm going to take this inside and get the pulley off and uh, get the new one on. All right, I'm about to fill it here with our Amsoil ISO 100. Can't really do this two-handed, but what you want to do is just fill it simply to the bottom thread. So once you see oil to the bottom thread, you are done and good to go. Now. The benefit with this is they claim you can run up to 8,000 hours before oil changes versus the 2,000 that the IR uh, oil says. So I'm guessing it's going to be, well, we'll have probably have a little left, but we'll see. So I'm going to dump this in with the funnel and we'll check it out when it's done. Alright, so we've got about 9, 10 ounces left and we're right up to the bottom thread. Uh, maybe just short, but you can see the oil level inside That all looks good uh, And again, we can always run it for a bit and then check it again, but that's pretty close So maybe I'll add a little bit more, but that's about it. So the hour meter like I mentioned before is gonna tell us when to change this um, Just a little nice convenience feature and then they do I did mention I think they do make the ISO uh, lower and then the SAE 20 for even colder climates, but um, I think this will be fine year round, especially in this room that's somewhat heated. It's not like below zero, but if you have any thoughts on this or have used this, let me know in the comments. Um, you know, what oil have you used? Have you had good luck with? But this all around for cars, for compressors, for anything is typically um, some of the best oil you can get. 
Here you can see the old oil that came out, about 25 ounces. So one quart will uh, get the job done. It's not clear anymore, but it's not too bad. Definitely due for a change and definitely overdue. So we'll get a funnel and then fill up the new uh, crankcase, or the existing crankcase, new oil. Alright, so a couple things. You can hear the motor squeaking. Um, I got the pulley off finally with a puller such as this. Um, the problem is, I think, I stupidly welded this to the shaft for some reason. Um, you know, 15 years ago when I hacked stuff together. So I am not sure. I'll have to measure this to see if the shaft is smaller than the pulley, if that's the reason I did it. I'm not sure why I would have done that. Um, yeah. So we'll have to see when the new one gets here today. We'll measure, um, if I have a caliper handy, I'll measure this and then I'll measure this. Because that's... I'm just trying to wrap my head around why I would have tack welded basically the end of the shaft to the pulley. Um, hmm. Okay, so that's how you get this off. Hopefully yours is easier. Um, it should just be a press fit on. Um, but yeah, very interesting. And... Uh, Maybe you can't use a smaller, different motor, cheaper motor. Maybe Ignorsol Rand just has their proprietary motor with the exact shaft width that fits their pulley, that fits the frame. We'll see. All right, new motors here. Obviously, we're going to have to switch our power wire from the old to the new. Just simple two wire nuts and then a green ground. Take a look at the other side. Here's our tag just so you can take a look at that. Now, it looks like it does fit tight on there, so that's fine. <clears throat> I just don't know why I would have welded the keyway to the pulley. But we're just going to have to either you know, tap this on until it goes, or press it on. Whatever works best. I don't know what the standard method is, but... We'll have to um, get it on one way or the other. Okay, so I'm going to swap the wiring and uh, we'll move on. All right, we have the pulley kind of loose and this, whatever you want to call it, um, put, I think, where it should be. I kind of tried to mark um, with marker, but that didn't really work out. So what we're going to do is going to move this back into the compressor, bolt it in, make sure the belt lines up, and then do our final adjustments if we had to tap this down a little bit or whatever. I did have to grind down the keyway because for whatever reason, I don't know if this shaft is um, thicker than this. Um, you know, it's... It's not exactly the same, because like I said, it's not the same motor, but it all works. Um, and then I just put these things in the freezer, just to expand them a bit. And uh, tapped, obviously remember to put the pulley on first, and then tap this down onto the shaft with the hammer. It kind of went right on, not a big deal. So once we figure that out, we'll tighten these down, and then I'll secure the pulley. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see how that looks. So you can see our pulley alignment is a little bit off. Our mounting points are where they got to be, right there, right there. So actually what we have to do is we have to probably pull this pulley, f tighten this down and pull it up, or a combination of potentially um, pulling this piece off a little bit. I'm not sure if we're going to get our full um, distance that we need so I'm gonna do that and figure out where we end up all right that's looking pretty good right there as you can see that's our distance 
So we're going to pull the pulley onto this piece more and that little gap should give us the alignment we need and then the bolt holes are lined up. Before I forget, here's the uh, new filter and old filter. So a little bit different design, a lot cheaper, these are like 8 bucks a piece and they have good reviews on Amazon so I'm not too concerned with running it. I don't know, I don't think that has a direction. Uh, it should hold up there. If I can find the... Yeah, I don't really like how that fits. This should stick up here. So when you put the cover on... Maybe we gotta stick it in the cover first. I don't think so, because as soon as you move this, it'll... Look at that, it just drops down. Well, this is kind of stupid. This is dumb. Gotta hold it from underneath a little bit. The things you do to save a few bucks, I guess. Alright, well, that's on. Alright, I did have to, I had to drill these out a tiny bit on the frame with a 3 8 drill bit. Just to, it's just a tiny bit too small. So those are in. This is still looking good. Uh, we gotta tighten these down right here a little bit and then uh, we should be dead on golden, ready to wire it up and try it. One thing I wanna mention, um, so this little screw in the middle, that silver screw, if you screw it in, screw it out, that's gonna determine when this shuts off and then when it turns back on. So this compressor is max 175 PSI, so I set it to right here to shut off. Um, this could have contributed to the motor failure because when I powered it back on, this thing was all the way up to 200 and still going. So I don't know if this got adjusted or just came undone over time, vibration. Uh, but now it's set good, so it'll turn on and then uh, it'll kick on around 140, 145. And it'll keep the pressure kind of in that range. So um, definitely keep an eye on this. These can go bad, um, the valve assemblies and all that. They can start to leak, but um, essentially what I did, I just turned it on, and then as soon as it got to the point I wanted to shut off, I uh, unscrewed it, unscrewed the screw. And then I verified when pressure got down low enough, it turned back on and then turned off. So I just want to mention that it's pretty important um, to motor and compressor longevity. So that concludes this uh, project, unexpected project. If you have any questions, let me know. But as always, like, subscribe, comment, hit that bell, get notified of new videos because it seems like things break in my life all the time. So there's always something new to fix and uh, get working again. So I'll crank her on and that's it. See ya.